Welcome back, I'm Shane and this is Relative Time. Today we're going to take a look at one of the best compressor style divers I've seen, with the Phoebus Eagle Ray Compressor. It's actually been quite a while since Phoebus released anything, and it's actually been over a year since Phoebus released their Eagle Ray GMT, which is important to note because the compressor is a follow up to that one. The Eagle Ray GMT came out in December of 2019, and it was a surprise hit that sold out rather quickly. Although, in retrospect, it might not have been that big a surprise, as it had a good look, great build quality, nice loom, and even though it was quartz, it had a nice low price of 200 bucks. What's more surprising is that even though FIBA sold out of these rather quickly, they never released any more. I guess they just figured that an automatic three-hander with a very similar look was a bigger priority, as that's exactly what we have here with the Eagle Ray Compressor. Now, before we really get going into this, and for the sake of transparency, I need to tell you that this watch was given to the channel to review by Phoebus, and they're not going to ask for it back. Hence that promotional tag in the beginning. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a closer look. The Eagle Ray lineup for Phoebus has always been their mid-range diver with a rather sleek profile. So you're looking at 41mm wide without, and just under 44 with the crowns. Lung to lug is also just under 47, making it very wearable for a variety of people. Total thickness, however, is a little tall at 14mm, which overall isn't too bad when you consider that a lot of compressor style divers are on the tall side. And as for reference, I believe the Dan Henry 1970 and the Spinnaker Bradner are closer to 15. Plus that 14mm does include the typical Phoebus case back, as well as a modest double dome sapphire crystal with AR. Now, rounding out the specs, you have a 20mm lug width, 200 meters of water resistance, with double-signed screw-down crowns, as well as a Seiko NH35A movement, which is the modern workhorse of the affordable watch. The case itself has a pretty good finish to it, with both the top and the sides having a linear brushing, as well as a polished chamfered edge acting as a border between the two, which really helps to highlight that sleeker profile with the rounded lugs coming out. Although, while those curvy lugs look great, there is a price to pay for them, as the bottom edge of those lugs are a tad sharp. The compressor has a rather interesting clean bezel. It's actually one it inherited from the GMT, as it almost seems more at home on a pilot's watch than a diver. The base has this coin edge type knurling, before it then thins out to a polished section framing the double dome sapphire. It's a little different, but it does help to highlight the sapphire crystal which looks fantastic as it's beautifully clear showing off the complex dial and bezel underneath. Now moving to the rear we see that Phoebus has continued its tradition of having a closed screw down case back. It has a mostly brushed finish and it's complete with all the particulars as well as a nicely embossed rendering of the Phoebus logo. Now every time I go over a Phoebus there's always a discussion about the logo. I know some people can't stand it as they think it's a bit cartoonish, yet some love it for being so different even to the point of tying it to Hydra from the Marvel movies, or as I like to think of it as a Kraken. Long story short, if this is a watch you're considering, just trust your first instincts when you see that logo, as after a full day, you might still be seeing it on your wrist when you take the watch off. Now, back to the front and at the right, you have two signed screwed down crowns, one for the watch and one for the internal bezel. Neither of them are very big, but with their flat sides and diamond knurling, they're always easy to use, as well as that styling matches the unique bezel. Now, frequently with compressor style watches, the crown for the watch itself will be screwed down, but the one for the bezel won't. So it's worth noting that both crowns here are screwed down. Another thing that's also commonly done is to sign the two crowns differently, just to make it more obvious which crown controls the bezel, which is something I quite like. But Phoebus here decided to use the same crown on both. That said, when you actually unscrew and use the crown, the bezel action itself is very smooth. Phoebus released the compressor with five different colorways. They all look great in their own right, with this one the straight black version being the most conservative, and I think that red dial one being the most bold. The design itself is almost identical to that of the GMT, where the only real change is the bezel going from a 24 hour to a 60 minute timing bezel. The dial itself is a nice glossy black with silver and white highlights. The indices are an applied combination of dashes and dots. I think they are a little on the small side, proportionally speaking, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. 
The indices have a nice metallic frame, which is then filled with a good amount of white luminous paint. Just beyond those indices, you hit a full train track chapter ring, which is painted on in silver, which winds up acting as a border between the main area of the dial and the slanted internal bezel. Now, there are a couple of interesting things with that chapter ring. The first is that since it sits in between the indices and the sloped bezel, it almost seems like it sits at a lower level, even though it isn't. But this does illustrate some of the nice visual complexity and depth you get with the design. The other thing here is that they decided to use Roman numeral hour markers in the chapter ring. Normally you wouldn't have anything at all, or if you did, it would be Arabic minute markers. Now, this is actually a holdover from the GMT, and I think there's going to be some debate on if they should have kept it here, or if it even really works, especially when it's sitting next to the timing bezel, as there's going to be a few points where you have Arabic sitting right next to Roman numerals, and I think that's going to drive some people crazy. Now, for me, I think it mostly works, but a lot of that is because one of my pet peeves when it comes to divers is when you have a chapter ring with minute indicators sitting right next to a timing bezel. I just don't like seeing duplicate numbers sitting right next to each other. Here you still get that detailed chapter ring, but you don't quite have that clash. And one thing that I think also helps is that the timing bezel is rather bare, so you still get a clash between Roman numerals and Arabics, but only at three points so it's not quite as bad. Now, moving back to the center, you have a framed date at the three, a painted logo at the top, and some minimal text at the bottom, as well as my personal favorite feature of any Eagle Ray, and that's a set of syringe hands. They may be one of the least used handsets on any diver, but I'm always a sucker for them. The red tip's second hand also looks great, and I really love these macro shots where you see it sweeping over the chapter ring. Now, overall, I think it's pretty well done but I think maybe not 100% fully thought out, as they just used a lot of the design from the GMT. It mostly works, but there is a question on if they could have done better. There are some other negatives with the design, but those are all ones that are typical with a compressor style watch, which is just the result of having a decent sized internal bezel. I mean, that bezel has to go somewhere and it winds up taking real estate that would normally be taken up by the dial. So as a result, the main area of the dial, as well as the hands, always seem a little bit smaller in proportion to what you would normally get with a watch of this size, which also results in the dial just feeling a little bit more crowded. So if you like a clean, straightforward diver, then you should probably avoid most compressor style watches. But as a whole, I do like this. It's different and complex with a lot of visual appeal, while still being highly effective as it gives you the abilities of a dive watch without necessarily looking like one. So if you like more complex designs and you can get over the center area looking a little bit smaller, then a compressor style watch might be for you. They can be a great addition to any collection, as they're always interesting to look at. Now, generally Phoebi are great when it comes to Loom, with the Great Wall being one of, if not the best watch I've seen for Loom. But the last few Phoebi have been a little bit disappointing, so I was hoping this one was going to be better. Here Phoebus went with a blue BGW9 that I think looks great with the design, and I especially like how every marker on the bezel is loomed up, and not just the Arabics. For a comparison test, I put it up against the Seiko Turtle, the Great Wall, as well as one of Zealous' new watches. And as you can see, it does outlast that Seiko Turtle. It barely does it, but it does outlast it. So if I were to give it a grade, I'd give it a B plus and say it has pretty good loom. Just not great wall or zealous crazy good loom. Now to keep costs down on the Eagle Ray GMT version, they decided to go with a simple strap. But for the compressor, Phoebus decided to include a pretty nice bracelet, which gives the watch a pretty good solid feel in the hand as well as on the wrist. You have solid end links, solid screwed links, and a pretty good stylized milled clasp. It also starts out at 20 and then tapers down to 18 just for a little bit more added comfort. The bracelet looks a little bit like a five link fully articulating one, but it's really just a stylized one link. Now, despite it just being a single link, it's actually fairly comfortable on the wrist. The one downside to the bracelet is partially due to its design. While the end links look great, the middle section that bulges out winds up giving the watch an overall longer effective lug to lug. In addition, the case back also sticks out a bit. The original Eagle Ray actually used a Miyota 9015, 
But with these newer ones, Phoebus has transitioned to a Seiko NH35A. So I think in order to keep that sleeker case profile, they had to add an extended case back, which you do feel on your wrist as it gives it a slightly flatter feel. It's still comfortable overall, and I've worn it multiple days without ever giving it a second thought. Yet at the same time, I think this is one that's more comfortable on a strap than its own bracelet. When it comes to value, with an MSRP of 360, this watch might be a little on the high side for having that movement. But you can use code relative time for 10% off, and that brings it down to 324, which is a bit more reasonable. Now, when it comes to affordable compressor style watches, there are only two other watches you need to compare this to, and that's the Dan Henry 1970 and the Spinnaker Bradner, both of which I've actually owned. For the most part, they're pretty close when it comes to price, as well as having similar specs. The biggest difference is of course the style, but beyond that, Dan Henry doesn't come with a bracelet, and Spinnaker gives you the option whether you want one. So since they're all pretty close, I would say that 324 is a pretty fair price. Now, as much as I am a Phoebus fan, I actually prefer the retro styling of the Dan Henry. But when it comes to build quality as well as loom, the Phoebus easily comes out on top. Plus, I believe it is the thinnest, which helps with wearability, as most of these compressor style watches are rather tall. So overall, it is a great watch, as well as a great offering from Phoebus. Definitely worthy of the Eagle Ray name. It's also one of, if not the best, sub $400 compressor style watch I've seen, at least so far. Although if you widen that out to all sub $400 divers, then there are a few I actually prefer more. Now what's great about the Eagle Ray compressor is that you're not only getting a great watch when it comes to build quality, but you're getting one with a design that really stands apart in a crowded field of standard divers. So if you do like the look, then it is definitely worth checking out. But what do you think of the Phoebus Eagle Ray compressor? Let me know down below. Or if you can suggest any other compressor style watches, let me know that too. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.